right? Yes. There we go. Okay. Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Northside United Methodist Church. Um, I'm Tony Harder, and there are a lot of people who didn't expect to see me here today. Don't get used to me being up here because Olin is filling in for me today. Thank you, Olin. And, uh, but I did want to say hello to everyone, uh, and I just want you to know I've really felt your prayers. Um, Kevin came to see me the other day in the hospital, and that was a great gift. And many of you have texted, and just I know you've been praying for me, and uh, I just really appreciate that. And God has, God as He so often does for us here at Northside, and every, you know for God's people, He has uh, answered those prayers, and I feel so much better, and I'm so glad to be here today. But I got to keep my wife happy and she doesn't want me to overdo it. And Randy's told me the same thing. He said, don't overdo it. So, I, but I, I'm here to worship with you today, but Owen's going to lead us in worship. I asked him if I could just say hi and if I could just mention a couple things about the announcements. So I'm going to do that. Um, you can see the, the announcements in the bulletin, but I wanted to highlight the uh, uh, finance committee meeting today at uh, three and then the uh, church council meeting at four those are very important i probably will not be here for those in person i may be uh, on the phone or something but uh, kevin and randy uh and uh, carol have some important business that we need to attend to at that especially uh, at that administrative board meeting so um please if you're on those committees please uh, come to those today um also want to mention we've we we're going to do a book giveaway um, for the kids at uh, Summit Drive Elementary as an end of year thing. We postponed it. We were going to do it last Tuesday, but it was raining, so we're going to do that tomorrow. And those of you that agreed to help with that, if you would come at 1:30 tomorrow, I think we've got the resources we need to do that. Uh, we're giving them a book, and we're giving them a snack. A, some uh, for for just kind of a going away gift for the end of the year so uh, reading is kind of our theme for our summer programs this year we're doing the book giveaway we'll have a free book for all the kids that come by and then uh, we will do uh, we're having our story time every Thursday starting June 6th at 10 o'clock uh, we'll have a story time down uh, in the social hall or maybe outside but uh, this will be a way for us to kind of kick that off with our book giveaway uh, to those students. Um, and that first, uh, that first time is going to be really special. It'll, it'll all be special, but uh, um, the name escapes me, uh, Nora's mom. Aaron, sorry. Thank you, whoever said Aaron. Aaron uh, is going to be here, and the first book's theme is on Africa. And she has traveled to Africa and is actually connected with a pastor there in Africa. And she's going to make a presentation to the to the kids that come to story time and, and tell them about her experience in Africa as we read a book about uh, Africa. Uh, I think it's We're Going on a Lion Hunt, I think is the first book they're going to get that day. So we're really looking forward to, uh, to that. So anyhow, those are the announcements I just wanted to mention. We also want to welcome... You know our visitors today. We have uh, we have a uh, Jamie Elrod is here uh, now. I'm, I don't know Jamie, but Olin uh, said that that he is a, a part of one of the founding families. Clay and Thelma's uh, Elrod's son. Is that correct? Did I say that right? So we're glad to have you here and uh, and glad to have all of our visitors here with us today. It's just. Oh, that's Beth. Yeah, yeah. Beth, I'm sorry. I didn't do a better job of recognizing you, but uh, Beth is here. So welcome, Beth. It's great to see you. And I'm sorry, like I said, I am a little foggy still, but not too bad. So my apologies to you. So we got Beth, we got Jamie, and uh, it's just wonderful. Uh, you know, we've had some new members here uh, in, in the last few months. We've, we've gained three new members. So that's a blessing from the Lord that he's bringing people to join us at Northside. So anyway, I will be done with all that. I just want to thank you for all your prayers and uh, whatever else, uh, you know, your calls, your 
the cards. Uh, thank you, and praise God that, uh, that he's given me the ability to be here today. And thank you again so much to Olin and, and Lorraine and uh, Jessica and Jeff and all of those, Randy, all who have just to kind of keep things going when I've been uh, out of pocket. So thank you again. So uh, take it away, Olin. <laughs> It'd be nice when we get those weak spells that we could just put a battery in us and <laughs> it would revive us like this. Okay. Thank you, Jessica. Let us bow for our opening prayer. Heavenly Father, as we begin our morning worship service, we ask for hearts and minds to be open. To the message that you would have us hear not necessarily to what i'm going to say but what you would have us hear we ask that you fill this worship place with your holy spirit and our souls would be with peace in peace let every song every prayer and every word spoken glorify you and draw us closer in communion with you other. And it's in Christ's name that we ask this prayer. Amen. Good morning. Our opening hymn is going to be Where the Spirit of the Lord Is. It's in your black hymnal, hymn 2, 2119. Let's go ahead and sing this through two times standing together. affirm our faith by repeating the Apostles' Creed as found on page 881 in your hymnal. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven, of heaven and, and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, Lord who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. Let's turn in our red hymnals to hymn 347, Spirit Song. This is a familiar one, so I know I'll still hear you even though you're seated. Would the ushers please come forward to receive our offering?
us to you with thankful hearts and in joyous praise. As we give of our money and resources, we surrender your whole beings to you in worship and adoration. Lord, may this offering extend the work of your kingdom in this, our church, our community, and into the beautiful world that you have made. Amen. Amen. Be seated, please. Since I cannot get up and run, or run around like Pastor Tony can, <laughs> I've asked Jeff to bring the mic, and as you have prayer concerns, just raise your hand, and he will come to you, and you can speak your concern, or maybe you have a praise also. Please, please pray for my dear wife, Martha Ann. She has uh, difficulty with diabetes, too, and she needs full-time oxygen. We are having our anniversary on September the 10th, 58 years of being together, and she is so precious. I could not live without my dear wife, and I just appreciate you praying for her. God bless you. Patricia Green lives across from Eddie Massagill. They found on the floor unconscious. She has pneumonia now. She's in ICU. So she really needs our prayers. Thank you, Holder. Are there others? You've even got your own bike. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Little, if uh, she has some problems, you did not hear that. And has some tests. Mm -hmm. some tests. Tests this week. And we certainly need to keep Tony in our prayers, as Pastor Tony, as he recovers and heals. And just pray that. Uh, all he had to go through that it is very successful and he will not have problems that he's had before. Are there any others? If not, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, you are the source of our being. It was you who formed us, named us, and first loved us with a love that is beyond even our imagination. On our best days and on our worst days, you claim us as your own and treasure us like parents treasure their children. You know our needs and our prayers even before we utter them. And yet, we find comfort in knowing that we can bring our hearts and our lives into your presence as we are doing this morning, expressing ourselves with whatever words and, and in whatever ways we can use. It is an honor and a privilege to not only bring our own needs, but the needs and desires of others to you. Therefore, this morning, we ask that you consider all the requests that have been made from our congregation, and if it be within your will, that they be granted. In addition, we ask that you be with those in our community who have no home or maybe lack suitable housing, for those who are experiencing financial insecurity, for our first responders, the grocery workers, the delivery people, the mail carriers, 
and others whose work and risk allows us to have access to food, supplies, and medical care. For those who do not have access to health coverage, for the leaders of our nation, Lord, and all nations, that they may hear your still speaking voice and know your wisdom and your guidance. Also, Father, be with us here at Northside Church, your church, as we make major changes in order to continue to be true to your written word. Guide and direct us, placing upon each of us the direction and actions you would have us take during this process. We ask this prayer in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Can you hear me good now? Good. Okay. The title of my message is, oh, we got to sing. <laughs> Almost forgot that.
before uh, Olin brings his message, let's stand. I know we don't normally stand at this point, but you cannot sing How Great Thou Art Sitting. <laughs> so let's sing verses 1, 3, and 4 of hymn number 77. Let's stand and sing that together. about that, I got a little ahead of myself. <laughs> As I said, I think the title of my message this morning is God is in Control. Several weeks ago, as is our regular routine, Lorraine and I were watching the 6 o'clock news, and we discuss just how depressing our world is, has become. And I'm sure you've all felt that way. We see and hear of shootings in schools, even shootings in churches, people being shot in their homes, car accidents almost daily, ships running into bridges, college students protesting, which results many times in people being injured. And on top of that, we are seeing some of the most devastating weather we've ever seen. 
global wise we see devastating news of people suffering during war war and rumors of war are constant in our news i looked at lorraine that evening and said what is this world coming to now i, I know i'm not naive i know things like this have been going on for years even before i was born but it seems like to me it's getting worse and it got me to thinking whenever pastor tony asked me to lead the worship this morning i wonder what god thinks about all this as a christian i've been taught and believe that god is in control and this morning, if you will allow me, and, and of course you don't have much choice, <laughs> we're going to look at what Scripture, or some Scripture, certainly not all the Scripture, but a few verses of Scripture says about God being in control. As I begin, I want to say a personal note to Clay Black. Don't get excited, Clay. I'm not going to call on you. Those of you who attend the Wednesday night Bible studies that Pastor Tony does so graciously for us, I think we could say that, and maybe you agree or don't agree, but Clay Black is a Old Testament scholar. Would you say amen to that? Yeah. So, Clay, this morning I want you to know that I haven't left the Old Testament out, okay? We're going to see a few verses in the Old Testament. Now, I'm not going to just read a bunch of Scripture uh, like we normally do, which is fine, but I'm going to read a lot of Scripture just and, and have a few comments and then more Scripture and more comments. So that's our outline for this morning. My first scripture is, comes from Psalms chapter 125, verse 2. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forevermore. I think in other words, we could say from this, God is always with us. And that is very comforting to know. Because if you're like me, you've done things you didn't, want, didn't mean to do or you regretted doing, but we still know that God is with us. God forgives us. God accepts us, accepts us as we are. And then Psalm 135, 6. The, do the Lord does whatever pleases him in the heavens and on the earth, in the seas and all their depths. I think we could say in other words, God always has his way. He is in control. In Proverbs 16.33, the lot is cast into the lap, but its very decision is the Lord. Again, God has control over all things. The Bible teaches that God's sovereignty is an essential aspect of who he is. That he has supreme authority. He has absolute power over all things. And yes, he is active despite the many doubts that we probably have. Ephesians 1, 11 says, In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. In other words, we become a child of God and we gain eternal life 
but only after we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Always remember that. And now one of the most popular verses in the Bible where we see how much God really loves us. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So God has always had a plan. And as we read in Romans, Paul writes these words. Romans 9, 15 and 16. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. Mercy is part of God's character. Just as he is faithful, he is holy, he is just, he is sovereign, and he is merciful. Mercy, like grace, stands over against human worth and effort whenever salvation is concerned. A Bible commentary explains it this way. It is free because God is bound to show mercy to any. God formed you and I in the womb. He knows us and his purpose for us. Everything he does and allows is meant to draw us to him. He wants a relationship with us and made a way through Christ. For that to happen despite our sinful curse. Salvation depends not on human will, but on God. And God has mercy. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Timothy wrote that all scripture was God-breathed. His word is alive and active in our lives. When we open the pages of our Bibles, we often uh, we open access to the very wisdom and instruction of God. We do not exist out of coincidence, but for the purpose in which God put us here to bring glory to him. The prophecies of Jesus' birth, his life, his death, and resurrection fulfilled or detailed in his written word. In John 19, 36, for these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. Not one of his bones shall be broken. Just think of this. God has given us this minute detail so that his words might be known that we can know that he is in control he has been in control all along and will be in control in the future Philippians 4 6 and 7 says do not be anxious about anything but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Maybe we could say, in other words, we're not alone. God is with us every step of the way. In the good times, and in the bad times. 
There is a word that means that God is in total control of himself and his creation. That word is omnipotence. A similar word, or it sounds similar, open, often, in, often in science, means that he is all-knowing and ultimate in truth. Another word, omnipresent means that since God's power and knowledge extends to all parts of his creation, he himself is present everywhere. Therefore, we need to remember this morning that God is always with us, whether we're having good times or bad times, that God is in control. And each day that we have is a gift from him. And that we should grow in gratitude and thankfulness for what God has given us. God is in control. And there is hope in the midst of all the tragedies and suffering that we see round about us. Because there is the promise that God will work all things are good for those who love him. Therefore, let us go forth from this place this morning and remember that we have the promise of greater things to come. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have the promise of eternal life. You will see each person in this room again. You will know and see your parents, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, and all members of your family if you have accepted Christ as your Savior. I pray that each of you have this morning. And just remember as you go forth this week that God is in control. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the vastness of your creation and the mystery of your ways, we acknowledge that you are in control of all things. Your wisdom surpasses, surpasses our understanding, and your power knows no bounds. In moments of uncertainty and trial, remind us of your divine sovereignty that you are orchestrating a greater plan for our good and our glory. Lord, we confess our tendency to worry and our attempts to take control of everything, forgetting that you are the author of our days. Teach us to rest in the knowledge that you hold the universe and our lives. You hold them in your hands. Grant us the faith to trust in your plan, even when the path is unclear. Help us to see your hand in every circumstance and to remember that nothing can happen outside of your divine will. May this assurance claim our anxious heart, calm our anxious hearts, and give us peace. Thank you for your promise to be with us always, guiding and protecting and loving us unconditionally. We surrender our lives to you, confident that you are in control and that we are safe and secure. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Let's stand together and turn in our red hymnals to hymn 462, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. And we'll sing all four verses this morning.
Jessica, uh, Pastor Tony, and Randy to come forward, please, and let us be attentive to what they have to say. I saw in the bulletin that, and Tony had called me and asked me to say a few things. Jessica has told us she's going to take another path for a little while. And so I was thinking now, where can I find that 20 year contract she signed? <laughs> because on this end, uh, we find it hard to let this happen. But we're so thankful for Jessica. Those of you who have been here for a while know that she's brought us through a lot before COVID, through COVID. Her faith and commitment to this church and to her job and the music, I don't even have to tell you what it's worth to this church. We're, we were blessed, so we, we have to be thankful for what we've had and wish her the best as she moves forward. Reminding her, you're still a member and James and you need to be sitting out there leading us in your song out there. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. The church has a gift for you. I want you to look at that. Yeah, I don't know. Just a remembrance of the church. Beautiful. Thank you. And I love for you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all are really trying to do it today. <laughs> well, there is a card in there, too. You, you can open that later, I suppose, or something else. This, this is a one of a kind, you know. Oh, yeah? This is an original from Cheryl. Cheryl made that for you. Uh-uh. Yeah, so there's none other like it anywhere in the world. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's you. special. So, because you're so special to us. So she, we wanted you to have something that you couldn't get anywhere else, okay? And um, I'm just glad that I could be here today. I'll be here next week, of course. But unfortunately, Olin and Lorraine and Jerry, they, they've got some and won't be here next week. So, so we wanted to be sure that we could recognize you today um, while everybody was here, especially the choir, because you've, you know, they're really connected closely to you. Uh, not just, I mean, everybody here is, but uh, but we wanted to. We need to remind, we're going to have to find another audio technician, too, to assist them. Somebody can change the battery. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, someone with a little technical ability as well. Yeah, the, the next music <laughs> minister will have have to be in there, add that to the job description. But, but uh, you know, I definitely wanted to say that uh, your uh just your help and your guidance since I've been here. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm only doing that because of you, but you've, you've been, no, you've been, you've been such a blessing to me as, a, as someone. We have a great ministry team here. So often we think in the church when, we, when you sit in the pews, you see me, you see Jessica, you may see Jeff, you may see people in the choir, but there are a team of people that make sure every Sunday we have worship and that it's meaningful worship. And Jessica has been a key part of that team and her advice and her ideas and the, the way that we've shared in this ministry team has been a blessing to me. And um, I know it was, it was a big shock perhaps when it was announced that I was coming here and I'm pretty sure Jessica wasn't sure what to think of me when I got here. But I dare say that we've, I think, grown very close. And I just want you to know 
that you're a blessing to me and us. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> so we wish you well. And, we, and like Randy says, there's nothing that says that you can't continue as a member here. You know, maybe there's a little transition time, but we know you and James are going to be sorting that out, and there are things going on in your life. But, but know that you are always welcome here. You know that, right? I, I definitely know that. Okay. All right. So we're going to uh, – Owen, would you just say a prayer for uh, – I'm going to say a prayer. Uh, I haven't gotten to pray today. i got to pray. So let's, uh, let's pray for Jessica. Lord, we are so grateful for those that you put in our paths to share uh, our love for Christ uh, and, and through the church, Lord, the way that we're able to glorify Jesus through the wonderful talents that uh, you've given people like Jessica. And she certainly has uh, a God-given talent that has graced us so much in the many years that she's been here. We pray your blessing on her and her family as they go forward to, to continue um, uh, worshiping you, serving you, finding a new path in her life as she maybe finds a, a little path of some rest as she's uh, she's had a lot of things going on in her life for many years and and uh, just we pray your your love your peace and your presence with her in her life from now on and and that you will uh, you will be with us all that we will share the love that we have for one another and the love that we have for you thank you god for our time together and for the times that we'll share in the future through Jesus Christ, we pray that your grace and love will be with Jessica now. Amen. You want to say anything? <laughs> I'm going to keep it really short because I get really emotional when I talk, as you guys have already experienced my ugly cry up here. But I, I love you dearly. I, I grew up in church. I've told you that. I grew up in, my dad was a pastor when I was little. I grew up in a Christian school in a Christian church. I don't think I ever felt the Christian love that I should have felt until I was here. You guys have loved me so well. You've loved Landon. And when James went through cancer, you guys lifted him up. And I have no doubt that it's because of your prayers that he's in the situation he's in now. And I just, I love you all so much. And you will always, always be my church family. You will always hold a very special place in my heart. And I'm just... I told Rachel this back in the day. It's being in this church that kind of brought, brought me back to spiritual life. And I just will always and forever thank you for that. I love you. Don't forget the meetings this afternoon. And let us all stand and go in peace.